everyone. I'm here with William Lee Rand. My name is Karen Kagg, and I'm really excited to talk with William about what is coming up in 2023. It's something really exciting. I've done it uh, myself, but uh, William's going to tell you all about his classes in Glastonbury, England. Um, let me give you the dates of those. He's going to be teaching in-person Reiki classes, which which a lot of people are hungry for. I haven't seen like real people in forever. Um, I guess I saw you in January, that was it. But um, the, he's going to be teaching uh, the Usui Holy Fire Three Reiki Master Training June 5th through the 7th of uh, next year, 2023. And then um, there's a little time in there and he's gonna tell you why about something exciting. So hang around through the video so you find out what you're gonna be doing in between those classes. Um, the June 12th through the 14th, he will be teaching another three-day training, and this time it will be the Holy Fire Three Karuna Reiki Master Training. So, um, it, William, tell us, first of all, um, what is so special about Glastonbury, and how did you decide to start teaching in Glastonbury? I think you started doing it in when, 1996? Six. 96. Yeah, so how did that 96, happen? Yeah. And every single year after that, all the way up to 2019, and, and only stopped by the pandemic. So uh, yeah, I'd be there now if there wasn't a pandemic. Um, and um, literally, I'd be there right now. So, <laughs> but um, anyway, yeah, why do I go? What is Glastonbury? Why do I go there? Well, Glastonbury is an amazing place. And when I first started teaching in England in 93, I started hearing rumors about this place, Glastonbury, and then finally someone said, you, you, should, you should go there. You know, you're, you're just like the people that hang out there and everything. You should go down there. So I went down and spent um, in 95, I uh, got a room and I hung out there. And I, th I thought, yeah, you know, the, so Glastonbury is a, um, a place that is like uh, for new age people. And it has, I mean, almost all the shops in there cater to new age activities. There are crystal stores. Crystal. There are um, stores that sell incense and uh, all sorts of other paraphernalia for new age people. And uh, there's also vegetarian restaurants mm -hmm. and uh, you know any kind of shop you could imagine that would cater to people that are into new age things. And then the town is filled on the streets with new age people. And um, back long ago, in the time of the hippies, you know, when they first started going there, I mean, everybody had their hippie clothes on. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and uh, so that was, you know, pretty amazing to go there. And everybody in the town is completely open in terms of their attitude towards people. And uh, in, any sort of um, political agenda or you know, um, lifestyle or spiritual path that you want to be on, they totally accept you. And, yeah. um, you know, people would often wear, you know, their uh, religious, their, their cl hippie clothes or their robes or whatever they would wear, you know, uh, for their spiritual path. And, um, you know, there are just um, lots of things happening around that. So when I went there, I thought, wow, this is fantastic. So I started going there every single year. And um, I, for, I taught in every venue, there's at least 20 or 30 classrooms there, places you could teach classes. I taught in every single one of them. And then I started hearing about this Glastonbury Abbey and people said, you, you gotta come here, you gotta go over there. So I went over there and the Abbey, can you show a picture of the Abbey? Uh, the sure. Abbey house is actually uh, at this old stone manor house and um, it was built, I think, in the 1920s or even before that. And um, yeah, that's that's that. That's here's the, the here's room. a model of what it. Yeah, the whole thing. And well, the, that's the ruins. ruins. That's not the Abbey Retreat House. I'm talking about the Abbey Retreat House where we stay, and the people. Oh, the Abbey the Retreat House. Um, yes, Abbey Retreat House. Right. Uh, well, this is okay. We can't stay in the rooms anymore, but this was the. Um, yeah, do you have a picture of people that are sitting out in front of the Abbey Retreat House, or is that mine? Oh, that's right. Yeah, here at the end. That one, yeah. Thank yeah there you. we go. Yeah, there's the Abbey Retreat House in the back. It's this old stone manor house, two-story, and it uh, they divided it up into small rooms, and then they have a classroom, and so everybody would stay there, 
and they would pre uh, prepare all of our meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and they would prepare any food that you wanted, whether it was vegetarian was or vegan or meat or, or fish or anything. And uh, custom, you know, every meal was custom made for each person. And, um, you know, after class is over, people could, you know, go back to their rooms or in the breaks, they'd run up to the room and come back. And so it was, you know, pretty phenomenal to teach there. And it's this old, uh, it's been there a long time, has a lot of character. The ceilings are like 12 feet high or something and uh, all ornate um, paneling inside. And then uh, show that picture of the tree. Go back to that one. Um, I go back to which one? With the big cedar tree. Oh, I think you've got that one. No, you were just there. You met, you went by it. Uh, this is Gog and Magog. You were just on the big cedar tree. It popped in the in Is it the, this in over here? Or this no. one? Yeah, you've got a picture of it. Do you want to share the screen and show that one where people are out giving Reiki? I under thought you, it came up in your screen. There it is. Okay. Okay. How's that? Yes. Yes. Okay. There. Yeah. So that's that's um, where we practice, and uh, so uh, I've got Reiki tables already there, stored in the basement. I'm not even sure they know they're aware that they're down there, <laughs> but I've got six tables. And then often local people who take the classes will bring their tables. And then we go out on the, uh, uh, in the back and there's this great big cedar tree right there. And we practice, we do, you know, we practice doing uh, hand positions and doing sessions on each other out, out on the lawn. So um, yeah, it's just a wonderful place to be. And Glastonbury is a, uh, a power spot. So there are ley lines and there are also multiple power spots all around the, the village. And um, I take the class on a wonderful hike uh, to all of these different power spots. And there's a place called the tour where, do um, you have a picture of the tour? Um, I do, here, if you wanna stop sharing um, and, I'll, and then I can share, yeah. okay, yeah. yeah. Let me show you a picture of the, yeah, I kind of just gathered up some pictures that we have so um, yeah, there it is. Yeah, so here is like the back way in. Yeah, so um, within walking distance of the town, there's this place called the Tor, and the Tor Tor means hill, so it's a very steep hill, and you can see that stone tower up at the top. Yeah, so that's the the la the remaining part of a church that had been there. The church fell down, but the tower still remains. It's right at the top of the hill. And so you can go up there and meditate. It's, it is definitely a power spot. And you can see all over, you can see towns far away and there's some hills, mountains in the distance. And um, I've had, you know, part of the classes up there. We all, always, you know, we'll include that in our hike when we go hiking. So the tour is a wonderful place like that. I think I and have then a why picture. You show, um, can you show the town center? That one of the town center? Yeah, so. Well, here, and you're going up to the- Oh, tour, yeah, this is a that. view, an overview. And there's there's a town center. And so um, see that restaurant there and they, the people are out on the street with um, their, their restaurant tables. And people, you know, a lot of people there and they're all interested in metaphysics and meditation and things like that. You know, and it's a, like a, you can see, it's a very old town. And some of the buildings are as old as a thousand years old. Yeah. And so um, I do have pictures of the yeah, George, the George and Pilgrim's Inn. Hotel, which is quite old. 1475. And, uh, oh, yeah. Back in 1475. So that's um, quite a long time ago. And so what the reason it's called George and Pilgrim's is because there was an abbey there and uh, a great big like a cathedral. And um, people would go and they would stay in the uh, George and Pilgrim's and then go over to the. Yeah. That's what it used to look like, this great big, huge cathedral. And it was one of the biggest and most uh, populated or used cathedrals in all of England at one time. And um, what happened though is Henry VIII uh, wanted, you know, you might know the story, he wanted to get a divorce so he could marry someone else and the church wouldn't let him. So he started his own church, Church of England. Mm -hmm. And so then he, uh, they took the roof off of this building and it fell into ruin. So now it's just, a ruined cathedral 
but you can go in there on the grounds, which still is has a lot of powerful energies around it. And um, oh yeah, tell them about one of the things you'll find on the grounds when you go through. See these um, is you'll see this sign. Here's yeah, one of the they, legends. Um, they say that King Arthur and Guinevere um, were buried there. So um, no one is sure if that's actually um, true, but many people believe that that actually took place, that they were buried there. So there's a lot of, this was um, actually part of Camelot. And yes. um, Can you there's tell a lot the of legends that go way back in history about uh, Glastonbury. And it's said also Avalon. that, um, yeah, there is uh, the tour again, but um, yeah, the, they used to call it the Isle of Avalon because uh, long ago, uh, the, uh, the ocean had come in around Glastonbury, which is uh, elevated and it was like an island and they call it the Isle of Al Avalon. And uh, it was supposed to be like a magical place and have a lot to do with uh, you know, the legends of King Arthur and so forth. And there were a lot of mists around there. So they would come in their boats and be all misty. And then they would find this um, island. And um, so, it was, and then they say that Jesus uh, came there with his uncle, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a trader and traveled all over. And there's a legend that said that Jesus as a boy was in uh, Glastonbury. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, it's, um, it's it has many legends and stories and uh like i say it's uh very old and uh let's show them do you have one of the chalice well i do tell yeah, them let's see story. the yeah let's see the chalice well um what i love about glastonbury is that there are you can find christians and druids and it's such a mixture of spiritual people um yeah right there that's it okay so um Love it. There is a spring in, there's a place called the Chalice Well, and it's a, an artesian well. And so that means that the water comes all bubbling up, and it's this very pure water that's purported to have healing properties. And it flows down through these small little waterfalls to different pools. And so in the 1700s, uh, as many as 10,000 people a day would come here to bathe in the water to be healed. And so you can still go in. Here's a picture of me standing in the wading pool. <laughs> the water is really cold, cold. <laughs> but uh, you can still, you know, walk around in the wading pool. And um, you can also fill your water bottles with the water. There's a place where it's uh, pure. Yeah, there you go. The lion's head. So this is the lion's head. You can fill your water bottle there and drink the water. And this is the, the red spring. And um they say, what was it? Um, oh, yeah, they say that the, um, the chalice that uh, Jesus um, had at the Last Supper was buried here, and then the water turned red. It and actually course, has a lot of iron. Yeah, yeah but actually, it, it, yeah, it has a lot of iron in it. But anyway, that was a story. <laughs> so there's a lot of these legends and things about it. And uh, it, ha it does have a tremendous amount of um, amazing healing energies. The energy is very mellow, soothing, yes. uh, calm, peaceful all around there. And um, there, there is uh, so many of these power spots. And so uh, the, the day after class, I lead the, uh, the whole class on a hike to all the power spots. And we hang there, we do Reiki on each other and meditate and stare up the sky at the sky and so forth so um you know that's yeah there we go yeah <laughs> we were laying on the tour here looking up at the sky and um tell them so about the last... this this is amazing i had oh, a yeah very, now very there's a place called the here. entrance to fairyland and then that big rock is called an egg stone and they don't no one knows how it got there but it's shaped like an egg and so it's supposed to be a, like a sacred stone. And they also call that area the entrance to fairyland. And they say that, um, you know, you can see some, many people see fairies there and they get messages and things like that. So uh, the whole area is very spiritual and um, a lot of healing power around the, the whole village. Yeah, you can so, feel um, the energy there, really. There's, there's something there, I, yeah. 
I read something about the way the water moves. So you've got that really irony water that makes the red spring. And then yeah. there's one that's full of really high in calcium that makes the white spring. And there's something about the combination of those minerals in the water that, and then the yeah, ley lines. The red and white springs. So there's a, a lane called the Wellhouse well House Lane. And then on either side, there's a red spring coming out and the white spring. And you can get, you know, fill your water bottles with both of them. <laughs> and yeah. we, we pass right by. Yeah. So that's the well house. So there's the um the white spring comes up from the well house. And then on the left side there, you can't see it, but there, oh, there it is there. <laughs> well, that's the spring at the well house. So that's the um the white spring. And then on the opposite side of the road, there's the red spring that comes from the chalice well. So you can fill your water bottles with both of those. They're both purported to be um, you know, healing have healing properties. So we on our hike, we stop there and fill our water bottles and uh, get to drink that water. So- um, And they're very close together. That's what's so unusual. I mean- Yeah, they're right across the street. Distance, but the water's so different. Yeah, there's uh, one a hill on one side and on the other, and they're at the bottom. So these springs are coming out. And um, well, I take the class on the hike and then we end up back in uh, the village of Glastonbury and we go to uh, one of the restaurants and like I say, they have a lot of uh, really nice vegetarian restaurants or, you know, they have everything really in terms of food. Wait, um, I forgot one place that you took us to Oh, see Gog and Magog. Gog and Magog. Yeah, so these trees, you'll see the um, with one without leaves right in front of us and to the right is um, Magog. <laughs> yeah. So uh, they're ancient trees. They say that they are a thousand years old or something. Two, I think 2,000. Or 2,000, yes. Yeah. And so, yeah, um, the drug, um, ha, you know, has passed on, except that there is a lot of energy still in the tree. And then um, Magog is still alive. And uh, so there's a fence there, but um, everybody just jumps over the fence. And I'm not saying you should do that, of course. But <laughs> Yeah, hike with William. Everybody you jumps really over it and goes in there and touches the trees and everything. So, um, yeah, you can hang out with the trees. And so we, you know, go on that hike all around and and back in the town and at the, you know, the, on the the day after class. So uh, you know, the class is three days and uh, it's there at the um, Abbey Retreat House. And then you can stay in the village. There's many many bed and breakfast within walking distance of where the class was held. And um, then uh, there's also many of many restaurants and places to get food. Mm -hmm. And there's also a, like a, a almost like, there's a grocery store and there's a health food store. Yeah. And yeah, they have a health, regular health food store and uh, grocery stores and, you know, it, but it's very small. So um, this small little village, you could walk from one end to the other in about less than maybe 20 minutes or 15 or something like that it's not you know it's uh, it kind of goes downhill a little bit it's called high street and then it turns to magdalene street mary and um, mary magdalene is another yeah there's a street named there. after mary magdalene and there's a church a mary magdalene church there mm -hmm. so uh to me there's a lot of divine feminine energy there it's just so inclusive and heart-centered in fact, did we mention that many consider Glastonbury to be the heart chakra of the earth? Yeah, they say that too. I, it feels like it. I mean, it definitely has that very uh, loving, soothing, very peaceful energy. Uh, very nice place. So I would. So William, would you recommend, since you can walk everywhere and you can get an Airbnb or a bed and breakfast right there, would you recommend that people get uh, rent a car or just well um you know i used to rent a car and then after i saw everything i mean i traveled you know 50 miles or more out all around the village and saw everything and then after that i stopped renting a car but uh the thing is some people can you don't not everyone needs a car so um you can cut you know you take a taxi from the airport and there's a couple ways to get there you can fly into london and then take a bus or taxi all the way to Glastonbury, or which is actually, it's about what, three hour drive or something? 
Is yeah, it? it's not it's not a bad of course I'm from Texas. I'm like, ah, it's nothing. It's like, yeah, two and a half, three hours. Yeah, um, two and a half, three hours from London. And or you could fly into the Bristol airport, which is 45 minutes and take a taxi. So that's how I go. But to get to Bristol, you have to fly into um uh the Netherlands, um Amsterdam. Yeah, you fly into Amsterdam and then fly back to Bristol. That's how you get to the Bristol airport. At least how we, that's how we did when I was going back yeah, in 2019. So, so um, and then you can take a taxi from the Bristol airport to Glastonbury or rent a car there as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's 45 yeah. minutes from Bristol. The so bus is really cheap. There. I got, I've got to say, I didn't take a taxi because I'm, I'm very thrifty. I was a single mom when I did this and I didn't have a lot of money. And I took a bus um, and the bus stops right down there, uh, downtown in Glastonbury. And it leaves in the morning. So if you don't really need a car and it's cheap. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think, you know, probably other people, some people will have cars and you can, you know, hang with them or something. You want to, you know. Uh, I've done it with a car. car when I came back with my son. And I would say this. Um, yeah, we had the Airbnb a little bit out of Glastonbury. But, it's, you know, it's easier. It's kind of hard to find a parking spot when you're like going to the Chalice Well or something. So yeah. I would recommend just... That's one of the problems with a vehicle. And you can walk everywhere. So if you park your vehicle, there is a parking area behind everything. Uh, there's a couple of big parking areas. So if you park, then you can just walk and walk wherever you need to go. So I, I just have to say, as someone who's done this class, the class costs the same, whether you take it here or you take it there. I mean, it's the, the price of the class is the same. And William, that, that day hike that you took us on, the day after, I kept thinking, one, you couldn't get a hike like this. It was like, um, I mean, you're not a native of Glastonbury, but, but you've been there enough times that you were taking us to places that I never, ever, ever would have found on my own. Yeah. And, and, then yeah. You, and there's no extra charge for that. William just does that. I mean, and that would cost a lot of extra money if you're thinking, wow, like, why would you want to do this? Because it's an, an incredible life-changing experience that you, you get just for the cost of going over. And check Google Flights. You can put, you know, start searching on Google Flights and sign up for updates because this is next year, and that'll give you time. That'll it'll Google Flights will alert you to when the price, you know, the airfare is low, and so you can get a ticket and you can do it. And if you make that decision to do it, Reiki will ask Reiki, ask Reiki to help you. Stuff. Yeah, I, I, you know, my opinion is Glastonbury is one of the best places I, I teach besides Japan. But uh, I would say if, if Japan, Japan is really, really nice. And of course, it's the, you know, where Asui had his experience with Glastonbury. That is an amazing place for any new age uh, person, spiritual person, person that meditates into healing and things like that. It's just loaded with um, people and sh shops and uh power spots yes it's and the, power um, spots, the history and you know what just came to me william just um as you were talking about the town with all the different types of people i thought glastonbury is what to me the holy fire reiki is about like what you, it's it's a unity consciousness and world peace consciousness and glastonbury seems to be that kind of a place people don't fight over things it's just everybody coexisting yeah, every uh, yeah, you're completely accepting of any spiritual path, any lifestyle. Uh, you know, I mean, every, every type of lifestyle you can imagine is totally acceptable there, and is like normal. Normal, and, normal uh, for Glastonbury. By yeah, the way, yeah. there's a for those of you who do social media on Facebook, there's a Facebook group called Normal for Glastonbury, and if you go follow that, you'll get a picture of what what I'm talking about, and I know you'll want to go as well. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. When I took my son, I, we we walked up to the tour, and I didn't know it was a, it was the international gathering of druids. <laughs> there are all these druids. Yeah, <laughs> drums and you know, and it was like, oh, you know, the people that you know who are, the man I stayed with, he was uh, he and his wife were Christian. They're like, oh yeah, it's the druids. Yes, they they come here every year. I'm like, oh, oh all right, great. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's got a lot of different groups like that and people and, you know, consider it to be a, a sacred place for them. Yes. 
So William, thank you for taking the time to talk to everybody about this class. And um, I just want to encourage everyone to, to think about taking your Reiki master training or your Karuna Reiki master training with William in Glastonbury. It's a life-changing experience you will never forget. Yeah, now the thing is, it's going to be limited. I'm only teaching one class of each, you know, one Reiki master and one Karuna. And it will be limited to about 25 students or something like that. And so sign up now. You want to maybe call the office. And I don't know if you can sign up yet, but I would say ask to be put on a waiting list or something. Um, I think yeah. it's about to be launched. Um, it, it came out in the Reiki News the summer of 2022. Yeah. Whenever you're watching this video, it came out here. So it probably yeah. is getting ready to be. I, I mu they must be up. accepting. Yeah. So anyway, if you want to go. Sign you need up. to claim your spot. Now, here's the other thing. If you don't get in, I plan to do this every year. So, <laughs> um, yeah, you can sign up for the year after that. And so I would say it's, it's really a trip of a, of a lifetime and amazing place. I've had some students that like it so much, they moved there. <laughs> they, moved, they moved to Glastonbury. So... Uh, <laughs> Somebody yeah, asked me, would you ever yeah. marry again? I'm like, maybe for UK citizenship. <laughs> <laughs> Move to class event. Well, it's it's just, um, it's it's a magical place. You have to go there. It's hard to describe, but it's a magical, magical place. Okay. Well, thank you. Thanks for listening. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you're watching this on YouTube. And uh, we look forward to talking to you again. Thanks, William. Okay, you're welcome. Take care.